Hello, and thank you for joining us for today's webinar, Keys to Maintaining a Vibrant Heart While Restoring Health, Strength, and Spirit from Our Inner Core. Today's webinar will be presented by Dr. Cynthia Thike. The Pituitary Network Association is a nonprofit organization that relies on the support of our members and donors. We offer this webinar series to help educate patients, their families, and their health care providers. During the webinar, feel free to type in your questions at any time. Please note that all questions will be reserved and saved until the end of the webinar. We have allotted time to answer as many questions as possible. Any questions that are not answered will be reserved and answered by email. Harvard-trained Dr. Cynthia Thike is a heart doctor that practices with her heart. She delivers security and peace of mind to her clients by orchestrating behavioral and mindset shifts to evoke lasting transformational changes in their health, well-being, vitality, energy, and creativity. She has helped thousands of people make changes to transform their lives through ways they think, feel, and act. In her book, Your Vibrant Heart, Dr. Cynthia explores the dynamic growth and healing processes of our ever-evolving hearts and the importance of treating our health, hearts, and lives as gifts. An acclaimed cardiologist as well as a practicing Buddhist, Dr. Cynthia unites Eastern and Western medicine to uncover the mind-body connection that places the power of healing back into the hands of patients. Dr. Cynthia received her medical degree from the University of Chicago Pritzker School of Medicine and her internal medicine and cardiology training from the Beth Israel Hospital, the Massachusetts General Hospital, and the Brigham, Women's, Brigham, Brigham and Women's Hospital in Boston. She is the medical director of two busy cardiology practices and two wellness centers in Burbank and Valencia, California. We're now going to turn it over to Dr. Thike. There will be a brief uh, delay as we change presenters. Hello, everybody. Hello, Tammy, can you signal that you can hear me? I can hear you, and I can see your screen. Everything looks great. It's all yours. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Well, it's definitely my honor to be here speaking to your group. Um, the topic is a little bit off point to, you know, the pituitary and the endocrine, but I, I think that um, as I go through the talk, the, your listeners will actually find it uh, very informative, and it really addresses um, what I feel is the core of where we should all be focusing, whether we're talking about heart disease, endocrine disorders, um, pulmonary, etc. Okay, and so the title of my talk is Your Vibrant Heart, and this is a, a, a image of my uh, book that was uh, re released in 2014. Okay, so before we begin, I want to just take a moment to um, just to say a little bit of a blessing and just sort of, you know, get ourselves grounded and centered. And so if every one of uh, your viewers or listeners could just take a moment to close your eyes, get your feet completely planted on the ground, and really feel connected to Mother Earth. Um, just imagine your your feet uh, shooting down tree roots right into the, the center of the earth and taking a nice deep cleansing breath. And, and really breathe in love and joy and energy and spirit. And I want you to breathe out your fears, your anxiety, your concerns, your worries. And really leave things behind and, and, and really focus and be present in this moment. First, I'm going to start off by just really addressing what is health, or more importantly, what is optimal health and what's the best way for us to obtain and maintain optimal health? The World Health Organization, the WHO, will define health as a state of complete physical, mental, and social well-being and not merely the absence of disease or infirmity. And I'd like to look at health as really a state of being, um, which is so much more encompassing than just the physical. Uh, health that most uh, patients and physicians unfortunately think of health as being. And it's really about a mindset. Uh, we all know of, of patients who have nothing wrong with them physically but um, are just not healthy in any um, you know, uh, definition. And meanwhile, we know of other patients who have uh, chronic disease or maybe have you know, some life-threatening diseases such as cancer 
and yet uh, their whole being radiates health. And so how do we um, get ourselves into that state of being where we really feel optimally healthy no matter what the physical state of our body or condition might be? How do we radiate that health? And, and we talk about health as being a whole body system, but particularly as being a cardiologist, I, I think it first starts first and foremost in our hearts. Um, how do we live our life with that vibrancy and that energy and you know, radiating love and happiness and joy and vitality and strength? Because it really is that. It is about a state of being, a state of mind. So first, I want to start off with just you know setting some intention for this this talk or lecture. Um, what I really want to impart to you at the end of our talk is is give you concrete tools so that you can start having self-directed healing through positive visualization of a future outcome. Talk a little bit about heart mass tool, um, how how to affect our inner connectivity. Uh, we'll touch a little bit on mindfulness and meditative practice, and then and lastly talk about our lifestyles, in particular our our nutritional intake, and talk a little bit about at alkaline detox and cleanse. Just a little bit about myself. Uh, Tammy's already read my bio, but I think more importantly than you know, all the, the titles or accolades is really about why I I am in this space, um, how I why I show up uh, to give these talks as well as when I um, you know treat my patients. And it's really about understanding my my purpose and my passion, which is really to awaken whether in my clients or in the audience that listen to me, um, the essence, the true essence, and to recognize that their heart can come alive when they discover their own three P's, which I define as purpose, passion, and inner peace. That inner gem, that jewel within yourself. I like to talk about the heart of the Buddha. And, and the heart of the Buddha is really the birthright of every human being. Uh, it is, you know, in its, in its purest light, is luminous and brightly shining. But the heart gets uh, restricted by fear and contraction. And I know that many of us, because if we're, you know, if we're living, we've, we've experienced that. We experience that small contracted self. And when that happens, that original ease, purity, and openness of the, the, our heart gets lost, and and then all sorts of um, illnesses or disease, which is really um, a manifestation of disease or discomfort, um, manifests itself. And so, how do we regain back this openness and this uh, pure spirit? And it's really from um, finding those higher qualities that the the Buddha likes to call the, the four abodes of loving kindness, compassion, joy, and equanimity. And it is in finding those qualities that we get the rebirth of a brilliant open heart and of optimal health that follows. Now I know that many of you on this call have you know endocrine issues and and what we would define as chronic issues and so as you start listening to my talk um, also that objection comes up as to no I've always been in this state or you know I've been through you know countless you know counseling or medical visits or you know that, that I don't have the time to really invest in doing all of this and and what I will say to you is that uh, we need to, first off, um, get rid of those limiting beliefs and, and start with a, a fresh slate, a clean slate, and recognize that anything is possible, and I, I will sh highlight for you how that's the case. Just a word about my early beginnings. I was born in um, Mandalay, Burma, or Myanmar, as it's called now, and it's really, you know, the 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 center of where um, Buddhism and the, this Eastern way of thinking uh, was born. And my mom is a physician, so I knew very early on in my, um, even at this young age of seven, that I wanted to be a, a doctor. And so 20 years later, you know, having migrated here to the United States, uh, having gone through all the uh, academic uh, programs, uh, ending up at Harvard, I had this you know, great vision of my my future of uh, you know my destiny awaits. 
but as life would have it, you know, be careful what you wish for, right? So the success, the the the, the big home, the mansion, um, the the three children, and what really came along with that, because I had lost contact with my my Eastern faith, my uh, my spiritual practices, um, and I had lost track of being centered. That all the stress and all the turmoil uh, really got to me and and the way that it showed up eventually was in the form of of a physical ailment and so I always like to tell my patients that if you don't listen to your body if you don't listen to the tiny little clues that come knocking you know first they come uh, tapping and then if you don't listen they come knocking if you don't listen they come banging and finally they kick the door in and the kicking the door in for me was in the form of severe anemia that really required me to have a couple of pints of blood transfusion and um, pretty urgent surgery and that was my wake up call that was my um, awakening and when there's you know incongruity or disconnect in your life um, you can ignore it for some time you can suppress it but eventually that sign or symptoms will continue to mutate and show up until um, you become toxic and, and, and that's how you know that you're no longer centered and aligned with your inner guides and that really led to a wonderful um, new opening and discovery for me, which transformed not only my personal life, but my physical health and uh, my my professional life, and led to the uh, the writing of this book, Your Vibrant Heart, which really um, journeys my path to rediscovering my vibrant heart and talk about both the tools and the methodologies that I use, as well as what's available to patients. And so this is my life right now, you know, from um, going from, you know, a, a marriage that was um, in turmoils and, you know, physical health to really having having it all. And, and this is what I want to show you how to do as well. So how do we bridge that gap? How do we navigate that gap from wherever our situation might be, whether we're struggling in a personal relationship, whether we're struggling with finances, or whether it's showing up within our heart? within our health. How do we navigate that gap? And I would propose to you that what needs to happen is first that we need to trust and then we need to be willing to let go. So I'm going to switch now to how that happens, to the power of our thoughts, our words, our minds, uh, which then leads to feelings and emotions. You know, we live in a man magnetic universe where everything is energy, everything is vibrational. Everything is first created in the mind. You know, everything is created twice, first in the mind and then in reality. So when we look at this big Boeing that, you know, can literally take people across the, the world, it was first created in that moment by that Wright Brothers having that thought that men can fly. When we look at our uh, our computer and our technology and the fact the fact that I can press you know uh, a button and send an email all the way from here to Shanghai, all that is possible because Steve Jobs thought it was so. And so when people first get introduced to this law of attraction. Uh, all sorts of you know ideas start forming, and for the most part, initially they be, they they start off as material things. So I can have that dream house, that vacation, that brand new car. Um, but I invite you to expand your world beyond the material to really think about how you want to attract the being in you, um, so that you become. Um, a, a person that radiates the, at the energy level that brings you, you know, your health, your relationship, your wealth, and everything else that you could possibly imagine. The law of attraction, for those of you who are part of the law of attraction, is actually a secondary law. And the primary law is the law of vibration. Everything is energy. Everything moves. And whether we're talking about us as a human being or the, some inanimate object, we all start off with the very basic subatomic particles. And how those are particles vibrate really then defines uh, the different um, objects 
and the different personalities. And so the recognition of that is actually very powerful to recognize that within an individual, depending on the energy and the vibration of those energy and those particles, we can literally transform ourselves uh, to different personalities, to different physical health. Bruce Lipton, um, who was a stem cell biologist formerly at Stanford University, wrote this very powerful book called The Biology of Belief. And what Dr. Lipton and many others since him have shown is that while we have genes and DNAs that control supposedly our biology, um, it is really the, the expression of these genes that um, sends a signal outside of the cells. And, and creates the, the actual physical manifestation. And so there's this um, terminology called epigenetics, which really says that there's, there exists above the genes um, a, a way to control gene expression. And so that our genes and our, our, our physical manifestation, our expression is not so much controlled by the genes, but by our thoughts and our beliefs that exist above the genes or epigenetics. And it's really our belief that forms the fabric of our experience, our belief that are formed by repeated thoughts. And whether we think something to be true or not, once we decide it's so, then it must become so. So this is the concept of epigenetic versus genetic code uh, control. So the genes are thought to control life. And in fact, when we first had the Human Genome Project and we were able to define all the genes, people thought that that was it, that we, we, we found the, the holy grail, that we now know the answer to every disease process. But we know that it isn't as simple as that. And in fact, stem cell differentiation is controlled more by our environment than by our, our genes, and that our environments control the behavior and physiology of the cells. And so epigenetics run contrary to all common established belief that our lives and our, our physical manifestation and expression is controlled by genes. So I love this slide that um, um, because it's, it's actually so empowering, you know, to, to think that rather than um, our, our genetic makeup and the chromosomes um, existing and controlling us, that we really sit in this petri dish and it's really our environment um, that gets to control us. And so with that, and particularly with these beautiful babies that are depicted here, I really encourage all the parents out there to Really watch your words, and because those words are vibrational energy, and really watch the energy and the environment in which we raise not just ourselves, or our children, or next future generation. Uh, for those of you who are not familiar, Dr. Emoto, a uh, Japanese scientist who recently uh, passed, uh, he did an experiment with water where he took um, plain water bottle, plastic water bottles, and, and he wrapped words around the water bottle. Okay, and, and here are the, some of the words that he, he wrapped around, you know, uh, heavy metal music, you make me sick, you kill me, Adolf Hitler versus thank you, love and appreciation, and Mother Teresa. Then he took these wa the water and just, you know, put a droplet of water under electron microscopy and, and filmed the image, the water crystals. And you can see just the power of the, wa the words that wrapped around this water bottle, how these water molecule chooses to express itself. And so when you recognize and understand that our body is 70% water and our brain is 90% water, the thoughts that we clothe ourselves with, the, the, the negative energy, those the self-defeating uh, um, um, words and thoughts, is really having an impact. And so we shouldn't be surprised then when heart disease, cancer, thyroid issue, pituitary or endocrine issue shows up as a manifestation because it is really that environment and those toxic thoughts and words that are creating our health reality. So what do we, we have a choice. We can decide to become victim or be a master. And it's really about conquering ourselves and learning self-mastery that is the key to optimal health and well-being.
Just a really brief word about the mind. There's two types of mind, and for the most part, people think about the conscious mind. And the conscious mind, we get to see, hear, smell, taste, and touch. So we have our five senses. But the reality is that our conscious mind is only responsible for 5% of the thought process that are going on. Meanwhile, the other 95% are our habitual thoughts, all those thoughts that are you know, are, are, are playing like a, a tape recorder in the back of our mind. That's the subconscious thought that exists in the subconscious thought. And those thoughts and those feelings and emotions are really then what creates the vibration in our body that leads to action, that then leads to results. So just having awareness of this, having a conscious awareness of the fact that your thoughts that initially can be either in the conscious mind or unconscious mind, then this creates the feeling, the emotion that exists in the subconscious mind that leads to causing your actions, which then leads to results. So it's not so much that outside circumstances, conditions, and situations affect you, but that your mood and your thoughts and your emotions and your actions create the circumstances of your reality. And recognizing that is so powerful. Um, and it's really about rising up into that level of awareness and consciousness. Because the truth of the matter is that for so many of us, we live down here. We live in pure survival mode. And certainly for any patients that I see that is suffering from a chronic physical condition who hasn't been, you know, um, have a life shown onto them to have a different level of awareness, they're always in survival mode. They're just barely trying to survive, um, going from doctor to doctor, you know, getting medications and so forth. And it's really about rising up to a level of awareness when you're able to, to consciously look at your emotions and look at your feelings and develop, you know, self-esteem through through different thought processes, and then finally making that initial transformation that then leads to so much more on the spiritual side of things. Thomas Trollard um, said, uh, divine operation is for expansion and fuller expression. And, and the Talmud has this great line that says, for every blade of grass has an angel leaning over it, whispering, grow, grow, grow. And so how do we do that? How do we allow ourselves to grow? Well, I want to just talk to you about the three T's of transformation. One is tuning in, just like you're doing right now, to really be present, not to be thinking about what do I need to make for dinner, or I need to go pick up my children, but really tuning in and staying focused and present. Um, and also with that comes the in connection to your inner guide, which I'll talk about later. And you want to turn out the volume. You want to really participate full out in the process. Really learn as much as you can. Really invest of yourself. And the last thing is just transformational willingness. Are you willing to let go of many of these limiting beliefs? Because I know it's there right now. That slide that I talked about, um, those, those thoughts are running through your head right now and saying, oh, I've done that, I've tried that, I've, yeah, I've heard about you know, this, but it never works for me. If you're thinking it never works for me, then that's the explanation that shows you it's absolutely working just as it should for you because those are your beliefs. And so the willingness to let go of that. So this is my secret formula to transformation, my acronym, the HEART. The H stands for the heart. What would you love? What would you love? Whether it's in the area of your health, your relationship, your wealth, uh, time, money, freedom, what would you love? Your emotions, really understanding that your emotions are your inner guide. They are the reflection. You know, you've all seen people who who are, you know, radiating this negative energy and they might be saying one thing, but the energy doesn't lie. And so starting to recognize your moods and your emotions and, and recognizing that that is your inner guide, that's your inner spirit that's telling you exactly where your vibration is energy is right now and learning how to shift that paying attention and then starting with setting an intention and taking guided action towards the goal that you want. And then you look at your results because there's always going to be results. You can't, um, you know, my, my mentor Mary Morrissey says, if you 
if you lie in bed with the covers over your head, then what you create is a day in bed with the covers over your head. So you can't disengage. You know, our life is always showing up as a result, and our lives are a per perfect reflection, a mirror reflection of, of our, our predominant thinking pattern. And so if you have in your mirror a result that you are not happy with, that you want to transform, um, particularly if it's in the area of your health, Take a look at those results and recognize that that is reflection of how you're thinking. So reflect upon that and then repattern that. And lastly, you want to turn to your trusted source. Your trusted source is first your inner guide, your own inner source, inner sanction. But from there is a greater source, a greater universe. And you certainly want to give thanks to that and tithing for that. Um, I want to talk now, uh, shift the talk to, to how we would then apply this general philosophy to a more practical thing with respect to the health. Uh, we are definitely finding and seeing a paradigm shift in medicine that I'm so excited about. Um, it's still in its infancy and we need to get more physician on board. But current medicine, you know, East the, the Western medicine, will have us thinking in terms of body system. So there's the heart, the, the endocrine system, the, the GI tract, the pulmonary, the musculoskeletal. But we know that if we think only in those terms, or we go to physicians who only think in those terms, then they're going to say, oh, this isn't my sector. Go see the pulmonologist, or go see the cardiologist, or no, you know, I'm only going to deal with the, your blood test for the endocrine issue. And, and if we do that, then we're missing the big picture. And we're missing the fact, and the realization that all systems are interconnected, interrelated. And, and any simple Systems, whether they're showing up within the endocrine system or they're showing up into the cardiovascular system, it's just a message, a, a sign, a language, but it's reflective of a, something much deeper, more central, uh, and it's really about um, recognizing um, our, our, our inner, you know, the, the, the chakras and the inner guide and recognizing this interconnectivity of all the, all the systems that will, will lead us to the right answers. And so, so again, you know, in thinking about the whole body system, um, when we come back to that, when we, when, we, when, we, when we understand that every manifestation of a disease entity has an underlying cause. We might not have been able to found that, find that cause, but there is an underlying cause there. And if we recognize that, then it gives us hope. Okay. Um, what I find in so much of medicine is that we do suppressive medicine rather than elimination medicine. And what I mean by that is that, you know, if someone's presenting with hypertension, we suppress that elevated blood pressure by giving medication rather than trying to eliminate the hypertension by trying to figure out what the underlying cause is. Or if someone's presenting with a GI complaint and has gastritis or, or, or um, uh, reflux, we give them Prilosec or H2 blocker and we try and suppress that symptom. We literally say to the body, shut up, when the body is only trying to let us know that something's amiss. And, and when we can step back and take a look at that bigger picture and recognize that there is an underlying cause, then we will start to recognize that we have to start where nature wants us to be and start looking at the different processes within our food, our nutrition, our health, and, and thinking of things like the food and the gut microbiome and gut health and gut integrity um, and recognizing that those things then play onto our, our biochemistry, which then feeds back on the endocrine system, and the endocrine system feed back on all of this. And so it is a very much of an interrelated, interconnected system. But yet, instead of recognizing that we, you know, we waste billions and billions of dollars just doing suppressive therapy of, of trying to um, have that patient sit in that um, survival mode. So much of our, our, our chronic disease are, are preventable. When you're talking about heart disease, cancer, respiratory, diabetes, the endocrine, most common chronic vascular disease, chronic uh, disease is easily preventable. 
and reversible, and, and it's recognizing that, but recognizing that more from a holistic standpoint and, and realizing that, that you need to take a much more um, holistic, systemic approach uh, in order to get that health and to, re to reverse this chronic disease. And so I, I really, truly want to come back to, to what are the things that we need to do to, to achieve that, to, to affirm um, the vibrant heart. And the first thing is you just affirm it. You recognize that in you is this amazing heart, this amazing individual, amazing health. And you have to try and find your way back to that. And for me, being a cardiologist, of course, the heart is the key to health and wellness. But when I say that, I don't mean just our physical heart, um, which, you know, indeed is amazing in terms of its, its uh, cellular and organic function. But, but also, I want to address the emotional heart and recognizing that in order for us to have optimal health, we need our, for our emotions to be be in check, to be in balance, to be, you know, to feel like we're authentic and centered and balanced. Um, and, and so, um, you know, we talk here about heart disease, but really it applies to endocrine uh, system and, this, you know, the musculoskeletal system and all, all bodily systems that in order to, for us to have optimal health, we need not to be fearful of our chronic disease, but move towards really spending our time um, and our energy thinking about and imagining and, and, and visualizing that vibrant heart and that vibrant health. So how do we do that from a practical standpoint? We got to come back to the basics. We got to come back to nutrition, physical fitness, and detoxification. And detoxification, I'll spend a little bit more time on later, is really about, about you know, being aware of the, the issues that we are uh, polluting our body with, both from a from a physical as well as a mental standpoint, and and doing a cleanse of that. And then there's our spiritual practices. Um, it's so important that we know how to do these things, how to um, to be still and to to have meditative practice, to be mindful, and and in doing these two practices, develop emotional stability and resilience and centeredness. Um, and all too often. Um, when we talk, when I talk to my patients and my clients about meditations, and they always, you know, say, "Oh, that's so hard. I can't sit still. I can't still my mind." You know, that tethering, the, the the jumping monkey. That I can't tether the jumping monkey. And I tell them to start um, in a much simpler place, um, and to recognize that all too often, if we find things to be hard. That's because we're making it so. We're defining it as being so. But meditation is just about being quiet and being still, appreciating the things and the environment around you. And so for people, for clients of mine that have trouble just sitting still and meditating, I tell them, go out for a walk. Go out in nature. Start appreciating. Start noticing. Start listening all the beauty that's around you. You know, you don't chase away the dark. You don't chase away those negative thoughts that are constantly infiltrating our body. We replace it. We turn on the light. And so to me, um, just defining what the light is, you know, my goodness, look at this beautiful tree. You know, smell. Look at this, you know, water crystal, this beautiful water drop, uh, the mountain dew, the, the, the brightness of this green leaf. Um, when you start appreciating and noticing just the smallest nuances of things, um, you'll find that that's how you steal your mind of all the negative stuff. So what does proper nutrition mean? Supplements are not the answer. I want to start out right off by telling you that. Um, while there are certain supplements that I do endorse, um, they're always of, a, of a, a whole food nature. And so I urge you to not think of your vitamins, you know, the multivitamin, the Fred Flintstone as being your replacement for whole food nutrition. This is where it starts. This is where you absolutely have to get your, your minerals and nutrients from. And so how do we fill our body with respect to diet? 
one, we eat the wrong food, whether it's hydrogenated oils, cooking our oil, heating it up, the processed food, the preserved foods, the high sugar, the high unhealthy fat, and the GMOs, the genetic modified organisms, are becoming a huge, huge factor. And so we live in this very dangerous environment where just about everything we put into our body causes this toxic, inflammatory, allergenic process. And then we eat too much, we eat too fast, and we do mindless eating. So how do we transform that? First, we start again with just being present, being centered, being mindful. I invite all of you tonight when you go home, as you, whether you're preparing the, the food yourself or you have it prepared for you, when you finally sit down at the dining table, I want you to just take a look and notice that plate and, and ask yourself, which of this food comes from nature? Which has you know, felt Mother Earth? Um, you know, breath the fresh air, gotten the the energy from from the earth, from the so from the dirt and the root. And what food am I eating that is essentially dead food that never was alive? Okay, start with that. Just start with first the awareness to notice what you're noticing, to notice what's present in front of you. And as you start to do that, you will naturally start shifting so that you can start thinking about eating more nutritious whole food, food that are alive, that has, have, you know, live, you know, life in them. And the more colorful, the better. And don't forget, you know, your seeds, your nuts, your spices. Um, there's amazing, amazing healing food. And, and so when, when we talked about let food be thy medicine, it really is the case. And so as you think about all your pharmacology and all the, all the drugs that you're on, think about how can I start shifting? How can I start really cleansing my body and providing my body with the nutrients and the minerals and the spices that is going to allow me eventually to, to get off these drugs? But even though I talk in this manner, please do not do not take yourself off any of your medications without your physician's um, um, buy-in and aid and help and, and, and um, approval in, in doing that. But what are the benefits of eating cleanly, of eating an anti-inflammatory diet? Weight loss, fat loss. Um, and, and I see obesity or fat as just another sign or symptom. And so I never address the obesity in and of itself, um, just as I don't address the diabetes or heart disease in and of itself, but I look back at the whole picture and say, what is this disease or what is this symptom trying to tell me? Okay, And all too often, it's always rooted in the same same principle. It is about inflammation, inflammation that causes obesity, inflammation that causes diabetes, that heart disease and high blood pressure and cancer and, and endocrine disorders and you know low uh, estrogen and you know the cortisol levels that are are, are um, messed up, the, the the blood sugar control that goes out of whack, the pituitary. Um, it, it, you know, it, it, it affects our skin, our hair, our mental clarity, our energy level, our quality of sleep. And so once we start eating cleanly, cleanly we'll see benefits in all of these parameters and all of these systems. We now know that inflammation is the center of all disease processes. And this is a, a slide that was already um, pre-made, and I wish I had a, an arrow that says the endocrine system here. But, um, you know, it doesn't matter which, which you know, bodily system we're, system we're working in. Inflammation is at the root of it. And inflammation starts first and foremost in your gut. And it's about the leaky gut syndrome. It's about gut permeability. It's about the gap junctions that no longer acts as a barrier and let all sorts of toxicity into our body. And I would be remiss if I didn't you know, you know, stuck just to the physical is also about our mental stress and our mental toxicity that also causes inflammation within our body that then spans out into our mental system. Physical fitness, but not just physical fitness for the for the for the pure sake of doing. You know, I, I see 
I see people who come to my office and they're like, oh yes, doctor, I'm, I'm, I'm in the gym one, two hours a day and I'm just working hard. And, but their attitude um, is totally off cue, okay? And so they're, they're, they're finding this, this workout to be a chore, you know, uh, something that they have to do and it's, it's this, this drivenness to it rather than recognizing that as much of the benefit as you get from physical activity comes from the joy and the ease of, of movement, of, of, of feeling this energy as you, you let your body move and you move to the, you know, the sound of music or to the dance and, 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 and that physical fitness is all also about community and about um, interaction with others. And so I don't want you to lose sight of this, of that, the fact that there's multiple benefits that comes from physical fitness and that you don't just um, get narrow-minded in, in your you know, need to, to um, you know, achieve exactly what the, the AHA and the, the American Medical Association would have you do as far as incorporating fitness into your body. And there's quite a cost for a physical inactivity. And if you are honest to yourself, those of you on the call, and you take, again, uh, that mental inventory, you'll know yourself whether you fit into you know, this, this you know, 40% that says they have no physical activity as all, at all. And, and what physical inactivity is doing as far as the, the billions of dollars is costing in medical care and all the chronic diseases it's leading to. So how much exercise do we need? Uh, the, the guidelines are for um, uh, two and a half hours, so 150 minutes of, of moderate intensity aerobic activity per week. And it can be you know, added up to however means you do it. And so it doesn't have to be all in one chunk. You don't need to have that one hour in the gym. You can take those 10, 15, 20 minute uh, walk during your lunch hour, you know, get up and just start moving around. So move more, sit less. But most importantly, enjoy. Have that smile. Enjoy the process. How do we revive our, our emotional heart? Um, I talk about many tools in my book, but music, dance, creativity, laughter. The, the, you know, the, the absolute healing impact of laughter. You can go on uh, onto my website. I blog about this, about all the health benefits that laughter has in terms of balancing our immune system, our endocrine system, all the, the neurotransmitters, um, how it, it centers the brain, affects the brain, it regulates blood sugar, lowers you know, blood pressure. Um, and so really think of these tools as therapy, just as, as potent and just as powerful as the, as, as the drugs, as, as the hormone replacement, as the blood pressure medications. And then our mind, how do we reinvigorate our mind? Um, it starts first with just being quiet, being still, being centered, being present, being mindful. And from there, you know, we have so many tools and technology now. Uh, we have so many apps that will remind you to take that break, to, 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 to take that deep cleansing breath, um, to, to play that, that meditative song. Beyond the obvious um, stuff, I really invite you to take a look at some of these other less known uh, therapeutic forms, whether it's aromatherapy in conjunction with a nice soothing massage or acupuncture, um, visualization, I'm so big on visualization. So you want your endocrine system to be healed, you want that pituitary to be secreting all the hormones it's supposed to, start visualizing, start imagining what that looks like. I always try and paint the picture of that, that magic school bus as it, it floats around within your body. So have great, you know, vivid imagery of what that health looks like, what that healed system looks like. Um, and then lastly, it's really important that you connect to your inner guide and your inner soul. Um, recognize that we all have an inner guide. It is there, it's ever present, it's always talking to you, it's always communicating with you. But if you don't learn to be still and to be quiet, then you miss the messages. 
you know, you, you, you have happened to you, what happened to me, I didn't even share that story, you know, my um, awakening that I talked about, I had driven home to, um, to San Jose to visit my mom and the door swung open and my mom gasped and said, Cynthia, when was the last time you saw a physician? And I laughed and I said, well, every day, mom, I look in the mirror every day. And she could see in that moment, in that split second, what I couldn't see in the months and the years that was preceding that. And, and sure enough, I came home, got my blood test done, and I had a hemoglobin under five. I mean, it was a critical level. And, and so that certainly didn't happen overnight, right? And my inner guide had been sending me all sorts of messages and signals that says you're tired, you're fatigued, you're not thinking well. And I chalked it up to, you know, the work or the stress or the children. So be careful about the, the things that you tell yourself, the dismissive things that you tell yourself. And instead, just learn to be quiet and really tap into your true inner guide and true inner feeling. And when those uneasy emotions show up, rather than pushing it away or being fearful of them, allow it to come and just ask yourself the question, okay, old friend, what are you trying to tell me? You know, that anxious feeling, what is it? It's only going to remain anxious if it's not being heard. If you allow yourself to hear the, the symptoms um, and, and the message, then that feeling of anxiety really does truly go away. So healing, you know, we need to bring back healing in America and we need to really be looking at more holistic healing centers and, and finding practitioners who are who adopt this integrative functional medicine approach um, to health because I can pretty much tell you that if you are sitting here listening to me, if you have some endocrine um, uh, system issue, that there's a whole system imbalance issue that's also going on. There's stress, there's metabolic issue, there's you know nutritional issues that are going on and you want to address all of those things if you are to have health um, show up in your body. And so it's time for us to take that vacation and, and really think about uh, taking the vacation from our, our, our foods that are, are uh, and, and the chemicals that are being toxic to us, and also taking that break from the, the, the our thoughts and the emotional toxicity that's that's you know filling our our us. And so, here's my six um, uh, tips or rule to optimal health, and then I'll end there, and we can take questions. Um, it's really live in gratitude. Uh, live in a place of, of, of really appreciating uh, anything and everything in your life and recognizing that it is only in living in gratitude that we can um, obtain everything that we want in our lives. Um, laugh a little or a lot. Love yourself and others. This is so important, particularly um, in this month of February, uh, heart, um, you know, heart month, vacation, you know, the Valentines, that we really learn to truly love ourselves because it's only in self-love that you get self-care, and it's in self-care that you start doing the the things that you need to do to to correct your to, you know, to take care of your body, to correct your health, to eat well, to sleep well, to drink enough fluids, to think pure thoughts. Fill your, love with, you know, fill your life with joy and connect to your inner guide. Oh, this is so important to find that inner peace, that inner guide, that inner spirit that's going to talk to you. And lastly, each and every day, appreciate the moment, appreciate those around you. I think that's it. So I'm going to stop there, and then Tammy, if you want to come on back in and, and let me know if there's any questions or any comments that people have. Yes, we do have some questions. Uh, a few of them. Let's see. Um, how long does the whole process take once you decide to make yourself healthy? You know, transformation, um, true transformation occurs in a moment. Okay, it is the process that uh, leading up to it that can take a little bit or a lot of time. Okay, and so I, here I'm talking about the shift in the mindset, right? The true awakening, the awareness. Um, you know, that can happen in a split second. I mean, our conversation here, this lecture, 
if you allow it to, can be an awakening, a shift, right? That's the beginning, and that can be instantaneous. But for those who are the doubters, those who need the proof, um, um, those that um, need to experiment and work with it, that's the process. You know, for myself, it, 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 you know, I, it took me six months of, of working with uh, a, a, a spiritual leader, a spiritual coach, to really transform my thinking process, right? And so this came after I had my blood transfusion, after I had my surgery, after all my blood parameters looked fine, after I was quote unquote physically healthy by all the laboratory parameters, but I was still not in health, right? And it was only after I started um, looking at uh, personal development and, and really starting to uh, understand the, that my thoughts and my beliefs, my actions create uh, my reality and start really learning that tools and then, and then make that shift that the true transformation of health occurs, okay? And so that's from, a most, from, a, from a mental and mindset standpoint. From a physical standpoint, in terms of your body, if you start engaging in practical steps, uh, say for example, the physical detox. So we have a, a three-week uh, physical uh, detox program, an alkaline detox program, where we really teach you all the, 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 the food that you need to uh, be stopping that are acidic, alkaline, and toxic to your body and how to replace it with super booze and, and, and so forth. We support you with three weeks worth of recipes and menus. And during that three weeks, absolutely, patients go to detox you know, symptoms, they start feeling poor, and then slowly they start feeling better. But three weeks is just the beginning, right? And so to, in order for, to allow your body to truly heal, to allow your gut to heal, we're talking you know, three months, six months, uh, really adapting a, a, a way of, of of of, um, um, of eating um, that will allow the healing processes to heal, okay? And then the, 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 the energy part, the vibrational part, that's an ongoing piece that you just have to continue to work at and work at and work at. I'll tell you, I'm still learning. I'm still working at it. You know, I get home. I get frustrated. I go home. I get you know, discouraged and angry at my children and then I have to again allow myself to be present and recognize and it's always in, you know, the, 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 the number one tool that my, um, my coach taught me was um, notice what you're noticing, notice what you're noticing and in, it's only in noticing what you're noticing, what you're seeing, what you're hearing, what you're thinking, what you're speaking that we can allow shifts to start occurring in our body. Okay, and so you do that from a physical standpoint in terms of a physical detox. You do it from a mental standpoint in terms of a mental detox. And for anyone who's interested, please, um, you know, my website is here, info at DRC. Uh, uh, I'm, uh, drcynthia.com is my website and there's all sorts of blogs on there. Um, my email is info at drcynthia.com and you can certainly shoot me an email and, I, and we're happy to um, um, you know, get you started on the, or can you send you information on the on the alkaline detox program. Um, but you know, there's so much information out there, so much information abound. So, you know, I encourage you to not get into information overload. But really, again, recognize that there's an ease and a flow. There's a being. And so so the minute you start, the minute you develop an awareness, the healing process has started. Okay? And the minute you see yourself in that optimal health, then you have become that person, right? And then the journey, how, however long it takes, however long it takes, if you hold on to the, to the belief that I am healed, that my, my body is restored, right? Then the pathway is just the pathway. The end result has already happened because you've seen it in your mind's eyes. Hope that answered the question. Yes, thank you. Uh, another question we have is you talk a lot about endocrine issues being corrected through these tools. What about illnesses like Addison's disease? Are you saying an illness like this can be reversed? It, I, I, am, I am saying that, um, that the body is 
very complex, right? And so when you take, um, you know, something like Addison's or acromegaly or, you know, any, any disease process that we have, right, you know, uh, cancer, do we really truly know what were all the factors that went to producing that particular disease state or manifestation? And the answer is no. But I will tell you, we on a shadow of a doubt, I know who created that, right? Your body did. There are all sorts of thousands and thousands of processes within your body that created that disease state or that entity. Whether it's, you know, whether it's hormonal imbalance, whether it's, you know, uh, you know, the um, adrenergic, you know, toxicity, you know, uh, um, whether it's high blood pressure. The body created that process. And just as surely as I don't know how the body created it, I do believe that the body can reverse it. And, I, and, I, and my, my firmest belief is that, you know, when we read about medical miracles, when we read about that person that, you know, cured themselves of Lou Gehrig's disease or, you know, multiple sclerosis or, or stage four, you know, ovarian cancer, um, I, I think that they don't need to be the miracles and that um, we all need to start moving ourselves and our thought processes and our belief system to recognize that if it can if it can happen within them, it can happen within me. Right? That the person who gets cured from stage four lung cancer, there isn't something unique about their body other than that maybe they found a way of being that's different and unique to them. Great. Um, so yeah, yeah. That's uh, interesting. Okay. Uh, there's another question about um, the steps begin with affirmation. Can you explain that further? Yeah, affirmation is about um, stating, but more than just stating, it's about a believing. Okay. Um, is 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 uh, be, do, have, okay? And so many people want to have or so many people want to do and have as opposed to being. And so affirmation to me is about being that person who has whatever, you know, who does whatever, you know, you imagine and who, you know, and so when you, when you, when you, um, when you, when you have an affirmation, you know, I radiate health, I have vibrancy and energy, right? Those terms are still very nebulous. And so I would encourage you to have an affirmation that is more, I have vibrant health and I see myself, you know, hiking, you know, through the, you know, the Alps, um, you know, running across the field with my grandchildren, um, that my joints are limber and, you know, I have such great strength and my lungs able to breathe in, you know, just this, you know, just glorious air, right? And so affirmation has to be tied with emotions. There has to be a true believing of it, right? And and, and it is in, in doing all those things of, of really becoming that person who has the affirmation um, that you're trying to state, okay? And so all too often, right, people say the affirmation, but they don't actually believe it. I, you know, they're, 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 they're affirming, you know, I have a million dollars. Meanwhile, they're complaining about, you know, the, the, the bill that they can't pay. Right? You have to be that person that truly believes they have the million dollars. Or you have to be that person. And then you have to go and do the things that that person does. So in the setting of maybe arthritic knees, in the setting of, of aches and pain, you be that person that can run across the, the field with your grandkids and you start first by just going out and sitting out in the field with the grandkids, right? You start imagining what that will be like and, and rather than lamenting that you're still sitting in a wheelchair in pain, you let that smile come over your face as you imagine and affirm that this is how your life is. And, and, and slowly 
the processes start happening. And, but it doesn't happen overnight, you know. In that scenario, right, let's say the person who's sitting in the wheelchair crippled in pain, you know, and, and who's there now affirming that they're running across the field uh, with their grandchildren. Um, if you stay in that energy and that belief, I will tell you the universe will 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 send things your way. You know, all of a sudden you'll be chit chatting next to the mom of another kid that turns out to be a rheumatologist. You know, and says, "Oh, I," you know. So all I'm telling you is that, and and this is where um, the 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 belief and the the building that feel of believing and and testing it out with small things first, and and seeing you know things happening that then builds your dream of believing and, and believing more and more and more. I will tell you, since I started this journey five years ago, um, so many synchronicities, so many things have just happened to me along the way that um, makes me really um, have that knowing, that belief that the universe is out there protecting my back. And, and I know that about each and every one of you as well. Excellent. Okay. With uh, so many of life's facets hitting you constantly, how do you keep in balance with this practice? Again, it's about remembering, about being present, about being mindful. Okay. Um, do I have crazy days? Absolutely. My goodness, you know, just yesterday I saw you know, 10 new patients and like 30 follow-ups. It was crazy. I didn't even have a chance to breathe, right? And that's when um, having little tools like, um, you know, even an alarm going off in your, on your, your, your cell phone that, you know, causes you to pause for just a moment to take in that deep breath and, and bring in uh, an image of your son or your, your children, your grandchildren. Or, or, you know, in five more hours I get to go home and take that bath, right? It takes just seconds to do that seconds to shift that energy and, and you will it's unbelievable how that 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 brief shift can really fill you can really fill that tank and allow you to keep going but if we don't remember to be present and mindful to set those little reminders for ourselves okay um, my, my mentor Mary Morrissey she um, she uses the doorknob and the handle and so every time she has to you know turn the doorknob, that's her little clue um, that you know causes her to to pause and take notice. If you think about how many times we check our our cell phone, our emails, right? If we if for the number of times that we check our texts and our emails and our cell phone, if we use that as a signal to just you know just for 10 seconds pause, take a deep breath and smile. Imagine what that will do. And, and, and when I say imagine what that will do, imagine that what that does to your immune system. Imagine what that does to your endocrine system. Imagine what that does to your hemodynamic system. Imagine what that does to your neural system. Just, just taking that moment. And when you do that repeatedly throughout the day, okay, that's how we heal. Excellent advice. Um, couple more questions. Emoto's water bottle study is fascinating. Has this study ever been duplicated? Um, there's uh, many other people that have looked at it. I mean, Dr. Emoto's um, uh, research is, is well known. And, and since then, uh, you know, um, other people have absolutely looked at, uh, not just, you know, in, 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 in water, but, you know, in other, other uh, materials and substances as well. Yeah. Great. Um, I think we'll do two his, questions. His, his work was actually featured in, well, not featured, but they, they spoke of it in the, the movie, What the Bleep Do We Know? Oh. Um, anyway. uh, if you could pick the most important thing to recommend to somebody, a place to start, what would it be? Notice what you're noticing. Okay, notice the energy that you're holding yourself. And if you notice that is anything other than serving, that it serves you, that is not is empowering and not disempowering. You know, if you notice that it's disempowering rather than empowering, toss it aside. 
literally visualize you just sort of grabbing that thought or that emotion and, and tossing it into the wastebasket and then replacing it. That to me is by far the most powerful advice that I can give, um, both from a from a from a as a, as an MD as well as somebody who lives in the spiritual space. Excellent. Um, another person mentioned this is excellent information. Where can we learn more about it? I know you mentioned your website, but there are any other. Yeah, you, you know, recommend. my website, Dr. Cynthia, I, I certainly encourage you to pick up my book, Your Vibrant Heart. But but from there, I mean, if you just, if you just, you know, Google personal development, you know, names like Wayne Dyer, you know, comes up, Bob Proctor, Mary Morrissey. And so start getting interested in in their teaching and their work, you know, Deepak Chopra. Um, you know, even, you know, the, the work that, you know, Oprah Winfrey promotes. And so... This information is out there, okay, and um, but yet, you know, I as a physician, 20 years of practicing, when I was in my deepest, darkest space, and I got introduced to it, it was like a light bulb to me. I, I never, you know, I hadn't been introduced to this concept. And so my hope, my deepest hope is that for those of you on your, the call, some of you have heard of us. Um, this concept, but for those who haven't, just get really interested. Just get interested in it, and that's the start. Excellent. This has been very fascinating. We really appreciate you taking the time to give us this information. Um, this concludes our webinar presentation. Uh, we will be editing this video and putting it up on our website, so if you'd like to share it with friends or family, you'd like them to get a chance to see it, it will be available hopefully no later than tomorrow on our website. We wish to thank you for participating in our webinar. There will be a brief survey after the webinar. Please fill it out to help us provide you with the information you need. Again, Dr. Thike, we really appreciate your time and all this tremendous information. And everybody have a great afternoon. Thank you so much. Thank you.